both have ridden Yukon Striker at this point. Yes. Um, and the coaster project is finally complete. And what do you honestly think about Yukon Striker? Well, I, I'm biased, <laughs> obviously, and I, I can't help but feel, you know, invested in this thing because, as you know, you know, you watch this thing just be built up from nothing. You know, over it's taken what over a year now from the start of the tunnel to seeing this massive thing and hearing people screaming on it. I keep telling people it's music to my ears to hear people <laughs> screaming down that drop. So I love it. And it's it's gonna probably be my favorite ride for a very long time. Awesome. So it looks like you guys themed it like in a way that no one was expecting. Oh, really? Um, yeah, yeah, like this is really over the top. I compare it to like something like Dollywood. Mm -hmm. um, so what was part of that planning in terms of spending that extra big chunk of money on all that theming? Right, well, this is also the launch of Frontier Canada, as you know, and um, so it wasn't going to be enough for us to just pop up a sign that says Frontier Canada and here you go, right? So we have these new restaurant venues coming, we have um, the new uh, merch building coming, and obviously the station itself. Um, we really wanted to bring people back to like the 1890s, that Klondike Rush era, and just give the entire area here, and it stretches all the way over to Canyon Trader. And in terms of theming, we see Cedar Fair going back to the basics of Canada's Wonderland. Is that going to continue to move forward or is that just a 2019 thing? No, this is just the beginning. We really want to get back to our roots in terms of, of what that original theming was. So as you know, I, Frontier Canada was one of the first five original sections that was supposed to happen in 1981 and it, it never did. It got shelved. So we're bringing that back now. We've brought back the Grand World Expo in 1890, and in Medieval Fair, we all have to the ride appearing behind us. In uh, Medieval Fair, some of the names have been reverted back to their originals. So Wild Beast has its E back on there, Dragonfire with the Y, um, Canterbury Theater, uh, which was Wonderland Theater, and even like, you know, the Thrill Burger venue there is now going to be King's Feast. Um, so we're slowly changing the clock back. Um, and I think it's safe to say that this is just the beginning. Super exciting. Is there anything else you can tell us that we haven't been able to see, see in Frontier Canada yet? Yeah. Um, well, for Frontier Canada, it's going to be the, you know, the Miner's Cafe. There's going to be the Mess Hall, which is going to be Chinese cuisine. Um, Gold Rush Junction, uh, which will be like beverages and funnel cakes, which you can probably expect will have some kind of Klondike twists to them. Uh, what am I missing? Chuck Wagon. Chuck Wagon, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's all that's planned for this year. Um, but like I said, this is it's just the beginning for Frontier Canada, so there's more to come. More to come, yeah. interesting. So it's not the end of Amusement Insiders. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> favorite, uh, what's your favorite seat to ride? My favorite seat so far is definitely the front row. Yeah. How about you? You know what, it, uh, it's a toss up, because uh, that front row, you can't beat that, that thrill of just being hanging over that summit and having nothing between you and like that tunnel but just open air and your restraints. <laughs> um, but I have to give credit to the back row, probably left side, because you know you get you get the you get the acceleration forces and the gravity forces working together and against each other to get that sense of weightlessness. Plus the left side I think is the one that gets the outside of all of the inversions. Mm -hmm. So you get that extra kick. Um, I don't know. It, you just gotta try all the seats. Yeah, right? exactly. So it's a tie for me. <laughs> um, and then in terms of Cedar Fair, it looks like Cedar Fair is funneling a ton of money into Canada's Wonderland lately. Is there any specific reason that we see Canada's Wonderland getting all these massive investments year after year?